Hey everyone, my name is George Binkley. I decided to write my research paper on the RJ Reynolds Tobacco Company. The reason I chose this topic is because RJ Reynolds built his company in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, which is my hometown. Every day I'd see something related to the company, whether it be a building, piece of art, or statue, and it always made me want to learn more about the company's history. Um, I wanted to learn more about the company, uh, its buildings, and the effect it had on the city's growth. And because I grew up in Winston, I already knew a few things about Reynolds, such as, you know, he was a businessman and he created his own tobacco company and all that. But I really wanted to know, like, the true effect it had on the city. So... R.J. Reynolds was born July of 1850 in Patrick County, Virginia, um, and then he died in 1918 at the age of 68 in Winston-Salem. Um, Reynolds and his wife, Catherine, had four kids. He attended college at Emory and Henry College in Virginia, and uh, Reynolds had wanted to create his own tobacco company, but he decided Virginia wasn't a good enough spot for it, so he looked for the nearest city with a large railroad hub, and at the time, that was Winston, North Carolina. So the Reynolds Tobacco Company was founded in 1875 and was soon to become the largest tobacco producing company in Winston-Salem, and eventually one of, this, one of the biggest tobacco companies in the world. Producing 150,000 pounds of tobacco in his first year, uh, Reynolds was set to become the largest tobacco company in the city, and by the 1890s, Reynolds was producing millions of pounds of tobacco every year. This, in turn, clearly put Reynolds ahead of the other 15 tobacco companies located in Winston at the time. As a result of Reynolds' success, Winston-Salem became one of the most historic cities in North Carolina. Uh, some of the old factories are still standing, and the city has decided to convert them into commercial residential, educational, and even entertainment uses. Uh, the two smokestacks are still standing too, which the city does regular maintenance on in order to keep them up. Um, and the railroad tracks that run right through the city that Reynolds had used to transport his product have been converted into almost like an outdoor museum um, where they're still in use today. People can walk around and look at how the trains would come in, uh, where they'd load or unload their cargo, and like all while standing right in the middle of Reynolds's empire. So Reynolds ended up building uh, a lot more buildings, including the RJ Reynolds Auditorium, which is pictured in the top right. And that's actually been listed on the US's National Register of Historic Places. Um, another example would be the Reynolds Building, which is pictured on the left. And that was actually the design model to the Empire State Building for New York. And something that I just recently learned was the Empire State Building actually sends the Reynolds Building a Father's Day gift card every year. Going back to the Reynolds Auditorium, I actually got to attend high school at RJ Reynolds High School, and I got to experience the auditorium firsthand. It really is an incredible building uh, sitting up on a hill overlooking the entire city. In fact, um, Catherine Reynolds actually built the high school after Reynolds had died uh, to honor his memory and his legacy. Um, so Grayland Estates, which is pictured on the right, and Renolda Gardens, which is on the left, uh, these were actually where the Reynolds family lived. These two huge plots of land are right in the middle of the city. Um, today, Grayland is used as like a hotel getaway scene, whereas the uh, Rinalda Gardens is like a museum where people can go to see how the Reynolds family lived in the early 20th century. So uh, to wrap things up, going into this, I didn't have any specific questions I wanted answered. Um, I really just wanted to learn more about the company as a whole. I figured since I already had a little bit of background knowledge about the company, I'd be able to share what I knew with y'all. However, the more I dug into it and the more I learned, the more questions I started to have. And obviously there's still a lot more for me to learn. Um, and I have a lot more questions, but overall, I'm happy I chose to write about this and I'm finally starting to learn more about the history of my hometown.